Generally speaking, when you make a sequel to a game, the goal is to improve upon the original. Last year's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game was the first for this generation of consoles. It wasn't that great of a game. Uh, it was not really offensive in any way, but it was just a pretty dumb beat-em-up. It sort of tried to be like the old arcade beat-em-up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Now there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox, and PC. This is a terrible sequel. This is not a good game in any way. Konami has basically taken a huge step back from the original game, added a bunch of really junky platforming elements, broken the combat, and added in a four-player mode that just doesn't work well in the context of this game. The overarching plotline is you need to go rescue Master Splinter. The story's kind of cheaply set up, but it does have one kind of interesting thing in that you can sort of go through different missions uh, in kind of an open-ended way. Multiple mission paths are basically available to you while you're playing. But what's weird though is that the story itself is very linear, so even though you can kind of go to a different level, you'll actually have to go back and do that other level, which means you're jumping ahead and then jumping back in the storyline, which is just horribly disjointed. Actual missions are told through episodes, but each little part of the episode is extremely short, like a few minutes long tops. And most times you can even just kind of run past enemies too, so it's not like you have to stick around and beat up all the guys. For this Turtles game, you're actually allowed to control four characters at once. What that actually means, though, is not quite what it sounds like. You'll only have one character on screen when you're playing by yourself, but you have the ability to cycle between three other characters by pressing a button. The only reason you really need to do this is because some characters have specific abilities that make it so you can progress with the level, like Donatello. He's got the keypad, and if there's like a keypad that prevents you from getting through a door, you just have to switch to Donatello, press a button, and that's it. That is the extent of the ability-specific objectives. The actual gameplay is pretty bad. The developers decided that platforming was the way to go this time around. There's a lot of sort of haphazardly thrown in moving platforms that kind of go back and forth, up and down, you know, a lot of random jumps you gotta make. Some really, really obnoxious jump puzzles and sort of weird acrobatic mechanics that just aren't implemented very well. Like a wall jump, it's sort of like the Ninja Gaiden kind of wall jump where you gotta go back and forth to get up the side of the cliff. But it just doesn't work right. It, half the time you'll be jumping backwards just because it thinks that you're trying to do a wall jump off the wall. And it just, it just looks glitchy and bad. When you're forced to engage in combat, it's not much better. The bad enemy AI from the last game is pretty much here again. There are large sections of the levels that are just like vacant altogether, so you just won't have to deal with any bad guys at all. But in the rare sections that you do, there's not really much to it. It's just super easy. The one thing that Battle Nexus manages to improve upon over the original, or at least add in over the original, is a four-player co-op mode. Any combination between one and four can play, and it's available throughout the entire game. So you can just play through all the story mode of four players if you can actually manage to round up three other people to play this just sort of junky game. The problem is that the four player isn't interesting because it doesn't seem like it's designed with four player in mind. The camera just doesn't seem to like zoom out far enough sometimes, so characters will just like zoom off screen, you won't ever see them. Just trying to jump and get through all the different platforming stuff what with four players is a horrific event. And for some reason, all the characters share the same life meter. It is one life meter that everyone takes damage. Battle Nexus does feature some unlockable bonus features, uh, most of which are pretty lame. It's just like dumb character art and concept art and things like that. But the one thing it does have is that it does have the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game included. It's almost arcade perfect. The audio is totally different because for some reason they couldn't get the original music or something, uh, something like that. But other than that, it plays fine. It's four player, it is the original arcade game, it's dope. Unfortunately, what this kind of does is that it just makes you realize how dumb the actual game you bought is. The presentational qualities of Battle of Nexus seem like they basically are just holdovers from the last game. It's the same graphics, same sound all around. The graphics just kind of don't look that great. Uh, the environments aren't very interesting and the camera, oh the camera is so terrible. Especially when you're playing single player because the camera is designed to move on a track that makes it so four players can play. but. Sometimes it will just zoom so far out that it just completely obliterates any ability you have to make a proper jump distance, like just gauge it. And when you're playing four player, it doesn't even work right because you're still getting zoomed out to like not far enough because characters are still getting off the screen. It's just ridiculous. If for some reason you were really hoping that Battle Nexus was going to be the big turnaround for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, this isn't it. This is an enormous step back for the series. The game is just a big mistake. Uh, it, it never should have gone in the direction it did, and it, as such, you should just avoid it altogether, period.